listening to the Spectacle Podcast with Garrett Light. <laughs> he said to ask about. Oh yeah, here we go. The sh- your Air Force Ones that you were monogramming. Really? That's what. That's, that's well, no, he said like three things, but the first thing he said, ask him about, <laughs> ask him about ones. the Air Force Ones that he was monogramming twenty plus years ago. Yeah, I mean. Um, so sneakers were just kind of really boring at the time. And, you know, you'd look through like Japanese magazines and Boone and um, Cool Trans and all these mag, And you'd see like things that we couldn't get. <clears throat> so um, I was home. I had a bunch of Louis Vuitton bags and sitting there. And I remembered when like Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock would have the fold Dapper Dan kits on, right? Like Doesn't that Dapper to Dan that did that though? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, absolutely. I was gonna say it's a guy from New and York named it, Dapper Dan. Yeah, and then it. It, and then it kind of just again culture disappeared. Right. And I was like, let's put the swoosh on these shoes. At the time, I didn't. I I didn't have a Nike account. I had no way of getting them. So I knew if I went to like Champs or Foot Locker and said I had a kids sports team. I can oh, get a shit. discount. Nice. So I'd get like I think it, I don't even know how much. Maybe thirty percent off. And so I and buy. I'd get a bulk order of white Air Force Ones, for black Air Force Ones, men's shoe sizes yeah. for kids. <laughs> well, no, these they kids were, all they were giant down to feet. size eight. Like I'd get a full size run, right? So yeah. that I had like all the sizes. <laughs> yeah. And then I took them to this cobbler that was close to my house, and uh, I put got them to cut the bags up, put the swooshes on, and. I had them in my store in 24 and didn't really sell any. This is in Vancouver? In Vancouver. They, like, I wasn't selling any. I gave a couple to, I gave a pair to Alex Calderwood, who owned the Ace Hotel at the time. And I think I gave uh, Devin Ogis a pair. And no, a you couldn't other sell people. Them? And, no, I couldn't sell them. No internet at the time. So, Barely. and then. No, um, not really. And then, yeah, there's no internet. This is 1998. Yeah, no internet. Like, there wasn't even MySpace. This is 90, just like, <laughs> no, there's no internet. This was 2000. Yeah, there's kind of internet, but barely. 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 It's not the same. We don't use it for this. No, no, no. There's no and, commerce. No, absolutely. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. And so um, ended up uh, asking a friend of mine, and I, it, we were sitting in the house, and I'm like, what am I going to do with these shoes now? Like, I don't I, So I called up Eddie. Cruz. Yeah, at Union, and uh, said, hey, Eddie, I got these shoes, like, do you want some? How'd you He's, know Eddie? And he sent me a t- just because you both own retail met, stores and met yeah, at fashion yeah, weeks. Yeah, we or met years and, and like you know, Union was definitely yeah. You know, as far as street culture went, obviously back then, like ni- I think ninety eight, you know, was when ninety seven, somewhere in there. Yeah, um, you're like thirty at this time, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Ninety eight. I was thirty. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he's like, yeah, send me twelve pairs. So I sent him twelve pairs. And he sold them, and then Marianne in New York wanted them, and I think Pasa News from De La, uh, yeah. Wanted. And so, between New York and LA, they were getting them. Then I had a shipment uh, that I sent Eddie got held up in customs, and then he was like, "Ah, oh, you know, like, hey, is it cool if we just make them?" <laughs> How like, do you get paid on that? I didn't. Obviously, <laughs> it's like it's like you know if someone took a pair of Levi's and chopped them into shorts. Sure, it's not. I have to, no. First of all, uh, you didn't even physically make them. You took exactly, them to a cobbler. Exactly, and it wasn't. You know, it's it was yeah. bringing yeah. back an idea, right? And and then it spawned into other things. I did airbrushing with with virus and stuff like that. We airbrush shoes. We did all these things. Um, at the time, no one was really doing it. And then I remember. Uh, my friend who Greg Johnson who basically in Stanton Island and he's like dude this kid just walked by wearing a pair of your Shit. LV Air Force Ones and he's like it's spread like it's like now it's like that's crazy it was going yeah so then there was like you know uh, there was the good foot in Canada there was then they started getting came, and then all and then sneaker culture kind How of did, started it was just growing out it was just the beginning because I was buying dead stock shoes before that yeah um, I was buying Air Max 95s I was buying a bunch of stuff and selling to Japan and back then like you talk about the internet there was no internet like I literally would buy phone books from different cities 
And I don't know if you've ever bought in a phone book, but phone books aren't they're, they're cheap. F- they're like three, four hundred bucks a phone book. You mean back in the day? Yeah. I thought they threw them on your patio, their front door. Yeah, they but were free. not from New York and different places. Got it. If you like, wanted a different I, I had city, them all across you just had Canada. your local yeah. phone book. So I would buy all these phone books and I'd go through the sporting goods thing and find like these mom and pop shops that have been around wow. since the 50s. And, and I'd be like, hey, do you have any dead stock that you want to get rid of? And I would fly out to their place. And I mean, some of these places you'd go in and they'd lift up the floorboards and you'd go underneath and there was like boxes of old right. Nikes from the 70s, could be down jackets from the 70s. They had no you know? idea what they had. No, man. and it was like, I mean, you'd find stuff. So it was like finding gold. That's it cool. It was just like literally like on this, you know. I found uh, Jordan's like, uh, you know, before like rolling skate like just tons of stuff and it was like whether it was ringer t-shirts i mean again japan had a very specific narrow market that they bought into that got dry you know in uh, about 97 it was like 94 to 97 that i was selling the dead stock and um that's before 24 no yeah before 24 got it and then 24 yeah was uh you know that was just kind of the ball. The next idea. Step. Yeah, the next idea. I had a concept for. I mean, what was the concept? What were you carrying in that shop? And... When I first opened. Yeah, this is in um, where? Where? This is on like what? Vancouver, Water Street or something? No, or? it was in Kitsilano on Fourth really Avenue. Okay. So, um, yeah, we we basically took an old snowboarding shop and did gutted it, built like the place out. Um, and I had everything from like old Planet of the Apes toys to uh, there was brands like Social Studies, generic costume. I even had starter jerseys. I had uh, Leonard Kamhout, Porter, um, Snafu. Yeah, which was Sir, you Greg. Snafu yeah. is Greg. And, and Sir and Russell. Russell. Sir, yeah. yeah. Um, and so like no one was – Canada, there was nothing. And like from East Coast to West Coast, there was – you know, I think Uncle Otis, which sold Stussy. I know Uncle Otis. And, They're yeah. in Toronto now. Yeah. yeah. And they had a store in Yaletown in Vancouver. Uh, okay. And uh, they sold Stussy. But, you know, like back then it was like dub and drawers. And, you know, those types of brands were like West Beach was Bay, like in yeah. Vancouver. So um, doing that for, you know, X amount of years, I mean, it was, uh, it then grew into having a store and then having a gallery. I mean, I opened a restaurant for a while. Uh, magazine. And then magazine. But that's kind of like the, the beginning. I mean, that's like the yeah. end of 24 and the beginning of the magazine, are they? Yeah, yeah. That's what, well, yeah. So. Did you have partners in all this stuff? Uh, in the beginning, yes. Of me 20. And, uh, well, 24 was me and Kathy. Okay. And then, um, and then it eventually, uh, we brought in partners when, when we had Richard Kidd. Got it. So it's kind of always the death of it when you bring in those partners for you. I think everyone, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, everyone's expectations are a bit different. I'm, I'm a vision, visual person, marketing person. Right. And I have a specific, like, you know, even I try to make sense of like the things that I will scroll through and look at. And in order for me, to, it has to stop me in my tracks, whether it's a color, a texture, yep. just an overall composition that, that I like. Um, but those things have to kind of, and I think that's just a part of my nature. So I have these in, you know, ideas that if, uh, I, I spoke to Mark about this. I was like, if, if I had a wall of um, ideas, that people could come in and say, hey, I want to open a restaurant or I want to open a store. And I'd be like, here, this is exactly what it looks like. You already did the it. dishes to the chef. Right. To, yeah, it's like you just buy this binder and <laughs> it's good to go. Like you have everything you need in there. Right. Um, For any category. Any category, yeah. And that, I, and that's anything. I mean, we've talked about things, you know. Like, yeah. So um, I think that's just my – it's just a natural um, – I forgot. Reflex. I forgot to to bring it. I I should have, but I said to you the other day that I thought Richard Kidd was the. I asked you what was the best thing of all the things that you did that you yes. wish you had carried on. You said Richard Kidd, which is the only. I don't might be the only product I have that you made. Maybe not, but uh, for sure it's my favorite. Uh, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the Richard Kidd story. And 
my introduction was actually through my dad because it was a super luxury cashmere. Really? Yeah. Then you got the, it at Maxfields or something. Richard Kid store in Malibu. Oh, in Malibu, right? Yeah, yeah. You had a Richard yeah, Kid yeah. store there. Yeah, and I remember it was I, naked. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I think I went to it before it closed. Like I think it closed before I could even get oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't right. know how long it was. Well, that open. was again the Country Mart. It was like right. How long was the, that store even open? Uh, Maybe a while. Like a just, couple years. Okay, then I just didn't. I heard about it late. It was every like that store was just everything that really I made. I would have went in like 2006 or something. So it was probably yeah. towards the end or five. But the name stayed up there forever. They never took it down. Yeah, yeah. But talk to me a little bit about Richard Kidd and, and what um, was it about and what happened. Twenty four was at the time for me, I thought I could feel a shift happening. And I was in Paris and I was like, you know, going to Margiela and Balenciaga and all these places. And this is 2002. And I knew our, our lease was coming up in Yale Town. And I was looking at other spaces. So I was looking at spaces downtown, South Granville, Kitsilano again, all over the city. And I happened to go, I had a show in San Francisco at Recon that I was showing some art. And Recon's an art trade show or something? Recon, no, 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 you Recon had your own was a show. store oh, and it. gallery that got was it. owned by Stash and Futura. Uh-huh. And, um, and so I had a show down there. And um, Tommy Guerrero came and it was great. Like, I, you know, fanned out on him because it's like I grew up skating my whole life right so, yeah um but i was walking down the streets and they were tearing down a building and i looked at it and i was like wow it'd be really cool if you could just glass that space in and just have this staircase and just have it raw like it was like i just saw this had a vision yeah and so at the time when i was looking for a space in in uh in vancouver um we started looking in Gastown, but it was like, you know, there's, I, if you've ever been, obviously, there's like souvenir shops and stuff like that. I mean, you've got, isn't your, you have a store? Uh, no, Toronto. Just not, Toronto, not Vancouver. Vancouver. No, we sell to um, like Bruce Eyewear. Right, which right. Which is like the yeah, legendary. And Bruce, yeah. And um, Nada, right? Yep. So that's where I used to go get all my glasses. I also just remembered you have a eyewear contact too, who loves you so much, who used to work for my dad. <laughs> Really? Yeah, really? Eric. Oh yeah. Let's yeah, not yeah, talk yeah. about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I remember one time I, I guess that this is talking about him. But I remember I saw him at a trade show and he's like, you know that Rafe guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we can go into it or not. Yeah. I want to go back to the Richard Kid thing. Yeah. So, anyways, it was it was uh, looking at a space and that happened to be the space down in in Gastown that was like this giant atrium and I was like you know I I had done everything I possibly could to 24 like I, you know it was like all these stores at this time now this is like six years now of having retail 24 yeah. right like so it was from the gallery to everything 2002 I mean we had shows with cause Ricky Powell stash Ryan McGinnis Costas wow. like we were having these right. things and um, I had painted this, and all these stores started popping up, looking white, clean, very minimal. minimal. And I was, I, I was in Japan. I came back from Japan. I'm like, we're papering up the windows. I, I like literally painted the entire store black inside, and put on the wall in black. Right, so it was black on black. It just said, "Have a nice fucking day" across the wall. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and played like. Motorhead and burnt incense. Just the exact opposite. And people were like, yeah, people were like, what the fuck? Did, it's, like, Rafe's just lost incense his Incense and Motorhead are just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just fucking weird. Yeah. But I like it. So, yeah. so it was like, and selling like vintage Mickey Mouse t-shirts I know that feeling though where you're just like, fuck like, everything and everyone. Yeah. It's actually so, sometimes so easy to think of ideas in that space because you're like, yeah, yeah, you're just like, so these I are a bunch like, of things I like I that like, don't wanna, go together. So I was like, you want to copy this, copy this then, right? Right. Uncopyable. Exactly. Like, copy. Like no one wants to copy, right? <laughs> exactly. So I love um, that. And so, looking for the space, and coming back from Paris, I was like, "Why don't we, like, you know, there's Maxfields, there's Bergdorf's, there's Union, there's like Gimme Five, there's all of these great stores, but they were separated. 
Max Fields was luxury. Oh. Union was street. I yeah, mean, sure. in categorizing things, right? I get it. Yeah. I was like, let's mash these worlds together. Like, High, low, I was like, if everything. people want to copy something, like, copy this massive, <laughs> like, glass place. Like, right. this is before. Apple didn't even have a glass. Oh, you're going back time. to the idea of walking by the space and seeing the glass yeah. and thinking about a stairwell. Okay. Got yeah. It. And so then like actually creating this now, I was like, okay, you guys, this is like, yeah, this is it. And, um, I was describing last night, I was saying, um, that the glass to me was always like when you went into a store, everything that was fine and that was worth something was always displayed in a glass case. Yeah. So I looked at this as like the one giant display a... case and everything in it was like, I mean, we were selling Lucien, Balenciaga, Margiela, Rick Owens, number nine. But um, some streetwear stuff Mastermind too. Mastermind Supreme. Yeah, like Subi, like. And vintage. And vintage. And like I was selling like vintage Hermes trunks. So selling vintage, you know, jewelry and watches. And That um, sounds like all luxury though. Or could you get out the door with some I guess Supreme's not luxury, yeah. Back to like pricing wasn't like even the even Richard Kidd, yeah. my, my label that I was doing, Pretty you know, expensive. I was doing like uh, the sweatshirts were hand quilled by porcupine with porcupine quills and like dyed and like you know they were sixteen hundred dollars back then and this is two thousand and two. Like if you looked through, they would do features in like Nylon Magazine and they'd have like you know they'd have like T-shirts stacked up on there. Yeah. And you look at all the T-shirt brands and they'd be all like 45, 60 bucks. And then you get to our T-shirt and it was like four hundred and ninety dollars. Expensive. Yeah. yeah. But they were all hand embroidered. And now and like, it would be nine hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like I was pushing the envelope in in um, the way things were uh, constructed and the applications Let taking me, those applications and doing like let's make things out of cashmere like let's make you know we like i made everything was like hand knit and i want to ask you a businessy question because i don't have yeah. i guess I, I mean i do have experience in luxury goods but i'm just curious because i feel like when pricing items and then also like of course like making these items so this is a question around margins like i feel like sometimes when you make something it costs what it costs, but then you want to price it at a place where it's like only a certain people, like certain people don't have that with that much money, don't have the ability necessarily to feel a difference, but they can see it in a price and be like, that's a luxury good. Yeah. And I, for whatever reason it found you. So the, the, I'll, I'll let you go. But the, the question is pretty simple. Like are the margins good in that space? Like, does it really cost that much to make, you know, an yeah, elder I mean, statesman? You, look at, you uh, look at the cost of labor, right? You look at the cost of labor. Yeah. I'm sure. Like he's probably, you know what I mean? you like, Making stuff like a pillow in is North like four thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I made a blanket, right? Like forty-five thousand dollars for a blanket. I, okay, but you're not telling me there's not you're not making thirty-five thousand dollars on that thing. No, because it's at the end of the day. It's but you're like, not paying for thirty thousand for it either. No, no. For instance, though, if something costs like, you know, nineteen hundred bucks. Okay. Right. But, Say or two thousand dollars, and then you're and then you're going and saying, hey, I, I you know, I'm going to go and sell it for. Um, thirty five hundred dollars or whatever, and then that's the terrible store, margins. Uh, yeah, and then the store oh, wants wholesale. To, yeah, wholesale. That's fine. I mean, that's yeah, not yeah. great margin. No, but. wholesale. Yeah, I right. mean, you so can you only make it. You're making, yeah. so if you do even 80 percent. Say, say sure. you're at eighty percent or a hundred percent. You're yeah. selling it for four thousand. Yeah, the store is going to want to sell it for at least two point seven. Of course. Yeah. If not three times. I know. So that but thing, the thing is now eight thousand dollars. But the, but what's lacking from it is not just so luxury now to me is really the experience that someone has like right. like luxury isn't the actual item you right. know because no uh, it's the community that you that also and owns also the things too, or like the if i come in to buy a pair of sunglasses from you that are like made out of some crazy horn like or buffalo, something i don't like have that, that you know but I mean? if i did it would yes. be two thousand dollars exactly so i come in but I want your staff to be able to tell me. Th now, this is the experience of luxury sure. by me sitting in there That's right. and the staff's telling me these things and I'm having a, you know, a bottle of water and sitting there and it's like, you know, it's an experience. Yeah. And I'm walking away. Yeah, with, with an experience story, yeah. and a story and everything. Thousand and that's what's lacking now, I feel, in the retail game is the curation. And I, I, I think if I, I just my take on it is that during COVID and during the shutdown, 
that people concentrated so much on their websites because they were selling things online yeah, you had to stay home. that they allowed the physical locations to kind of take a beating. Yeah. And so they got filled with a lot of sales stuff and things yeah, like that. That's, that's and it was kind of happened to us. And, yeah. and, it, and it wasn't really looking all that polished, right? Yeah. And so, but I feel now that we can get out and socialize and do these things that it's more interesting to have those physical locations and sure. find things. And we went through a phase where, you know, when I had Richard Kidd, we would scour the earth looking for things that nobody else had. All of a sudden, buyers turned and were like, we want the same thing that everyone has. Just so that we can, yeah, it track was like it better thing. through it wasn't multiple that, doors. Yeah, it wasn't about, you know, coming into the space. Like, like coming into Richard Kidd was like coming into my home. Like, it was very personal to me. It was like from the music that was playing to the candles that were burning to, right. you know, yeah, the yeah. staff knowing what was going on. Um, it was really, you know, again, it was, I think, an experience. That's that, not scalable. It's so hard to scale that because you can't be at every location. You can't well, it empower was each. We tried. We were going to do a roll at like when in 2008, the markets fell out. And that's really what brought sure. the, the you know, the, the, the ship down right. was that because we had a bunch of partners coming and getting involved. And um, at the time I was Alex had just bought the the ace in New York and was doing the build out I went and met him there so we were going to do the store where opening ceremony yep. was originally we were gonna I was like working with him on that Palm Springs I mean we had Vegas we had Those Florida are all yeah we had all these places to do rollouts and the only one that we really got which was the one in Malibu yep and we worked with commune on, on oh, yeah, the uh, design for that they did my dad's store out there too yeah I forget. I mean, they they did a bunch of stuff. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. they did undefeated. They did a bunch of stuff yeah. originally, um, and so, yeah. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it it's it's interesting now out there. But I also feel like if you have a brand as yourself, it's like so important for you to create that physical location to tell the story. Yeah, that people can have that identi that can identify with something. You know right. what I mean? That can come in and they know the feel and the yeah i guess i'm just saying it's like we have nine stores so like as you scale it, it gets and uh, like it's twofold one it gets a little challenging them for them to like really know garrett because i can't be in all nine yep. stores right they can have a conversation or two a year with me but the people here probably see me more so a little bit easier to sort of like mimic the experience that i would want or how i treat customers um, and then secondly i think your comment on the pandemic like the one thing you left out that there's just something about this idea of working retail with the new generation, like it just seems like uh, it, it's uh, a little harder to find people. There's no pride in it. I, I think I just think back to like my dad's stores. Like I feel like those people like were life or retail people. Oh who yeah, were, like, really like, I remember proud. coming in and they could pull out and they could suggest they they could get a vibe of like what your personality was like. And right. hey, why don't you try to like like right. helping you along the way? You know right. what I mean? And and. Um, yeah, now it, it is. I mean, there are people that have been in the retail game for a long well, time. I, some and, of them work at my store for sure. I've had guys for 10 years. And uh, yeah, not and really do enjoy doing sales right. and enjoy that side of things. I enjoy selling. Like right. I enjoy telling like the story behind it. Like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hands that, that get involved for sure. in order to make something. Yeah. I think m one of my biggest uh, issues was that I was always doing something new. I never repeated anything, right? Like as far as when yeah. I was creating something. So if something was like, everyone loves that sweatshirt, well, I never made it again. I made right. something else. So if someone got that sweatshirt, like that was it. Yeah. You know, it was, there was a new fit, a new. <laughs> that doesn't really, that doesn't fit with today's model now. No. It's like you gotta you gotta hit repeat. Yeah, can we make a thousand of these, and how cheap can we make them for? And, and now how can they all yeah, be like identical? Vans was a great example of you know of that of like going here's a slip on, but it comes in, but a mil, but it's the same shoe. But by the way, your name is associated with some brands that did that, like Herschel. Yes, I don't. I know that you were. I remember when it first started, you contacted me, so I know you have some involvement with them. Yeah, so uh, you wanted me to when, carry backpacks when, my store. When, uh, but that's a repetitive. That product. was 2010. That's a repetitive. That I went on there. That's yeah, why I went to my store. Yeah, 
What was your involvement with that? Like creative direction or uh, brand building? I knew like, Lyndon and Lyndon. Yeah, I, I started designing um, bags for him. Lyndon had, we had met and and was like, hey, I want to show you, you know, me and my brother are doing these bags. Um, and I was like, yeah, we can. It seems like I such can help, not a Rafe project. I can help you out. Hey, you know, it was nice because they was like, you know, they wanted to, they were very focused on what they wanted to do. And I, f I was, I, I like that. I like when people are like, it's not this crazy broad. Yeah. Spec it was like everything was kind of funneling into this thing. And, and at the time, Lyndon was repping Vans. So it was like, I was like, you have the model right in front of you. Sure. You can do these bags in this and, and not just focus in on action sports. Right. And then I had made an initial call to Eddie. And Eddie was uh, redoing Stussy in L.A. And uh, I was like, you know, he was talking about Porter and, and like yeah, was, the, the bags. And yeah, I was, like, and I was like, why don't you talk to Lyndon? Like, I'm designing these bags with these guys. Like, why don't you talk to them and maybe do a bag for Stussy? And they ended up doing it. And I think that really, you know, sort of fight. I went and did. It was funny because I went and did uh, – I think it was project i don't know one of the trade shows in vegas and yeah. everyone was kind of like what are you doing here and i was like setting up a booth with, why they haven't seen you forever they hadn't seen me forever you kind of come and, and go because i was yeah well i'd have been gone because we shut down richard kidd and i'd been gone for uh, a couple years yeah it was 2010 <laughs> and i was like so you know i got to see a lot of the people that, that you know friends from beams and ships and all my japanese clients yeah know, ron herman and um that. and then you had your own brand like you, they're all your own i brand. did ray ray just your your ray Fadelberg. F, yeah ray Fadelberg. that was just cashmere yeah just cashmere yeah well again i originally you know um i originally done had been doing hand knit cashmere stuff long before like when i had 24 and uh doing hand knits and when i did richard kidd I was selling to Maxfields, and um, I had stopped and uh, helped out a friend who started a cashmere line. <laughs> we're not going to name? No, we're not going to name. <laughs> we're, there's no Do you need, have a no lot need, of not naming no need, names? There's, there's no need to. Like, there really isn't. Okay. Anyways, he came out to Vancouver. I introduced him to my knitters. I, I you know, I was doing stuff, and... Um, I was like, look, again, 2008, I'm shutting it down. Right. I have all of this cashmere. Here's my knitters. Why don't you work with them? And I took them into Maxfields and introduced them to, to, uh, the buyers, to Vincent. Yeah, yeah. Vincent, yeah. And, uh, and I stopped doing it. I was just like, I was done. I was out of it. And, you know, he built his brand. And then I got a phone call, and it was Vincent. Vincent wasn't at Maxfields anymore, and um, had asked me if you know, can you make some hats for me? And I was like, well, I thought, you know, excuse me. I'm like, he's like, no, I'm at another store in in Venice, and so I was like, sure. So I made him some hats. Oh wait, I know Vincent. Yeah, yeah, I know Vincent. Yeah. yeah so I made him some hats, and then. Uh, um, I was like all jazzed up to create knits again. And yeah. I woke up at, uh, I was living on an Island and I woke up at seven and I was going down to the ferry and I called Vincent and I said, Hey, if I start designing again, will you do sales for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, sure. It's like, cool. I was like, perfect. And I just went full board, got ready. I went to Paris. That's when we put you in your magazine, in our magazine. When you yeah, were like living came, on that yeah, island, yeah. we came who and came shot out? you. You came, didn't you? Not you me didn't personally, no. Who came out and shot, though, for that? I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. We had a bunch of photographers at the time. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you were like in your yeah. island, in your yeah. studio, yeah. or just, just, just creating. Yeah. And so, and that was it. So Do you I, feel good in that space? Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, I enjoy, you know, having, it's like Willy Wonka in his chocolate factory. It's just like, you know, being able to, I had my machines, you know, and dyeing stuff and yarn and knitter. But that wasn't like, like, that's not like what your early career was like. You were like city, you know, you were like. I was city, yeah. 
I mean, everything was a learning curve, right? Do you right? think that's as you get it older, like, you just like need, like it just. I mean, now it's like I have a, I, have, I definitely have like structure where I think before I, you know, I, I'm, my production managers probably hated me because they were like, it's great that you make one, but now we got to make right. hundreds of these right. things and how are we going to do that? Yeah, stop with this. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like I was making these things that were like one-offs, sure. but it was like, okay, we got to reproduce this a right. hundred times over. Yeah. So um, now I, I've, yeah, now it's like, and again, this is what I said in the beginning. It's like, you know, I am more a visionary and artist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The business side of things, you know, it's like, yeah. What was that Voltaire quote you showed me the other day? So good. I almost posted it, but then oh. I hate the I hate social media because then I didn't want people to think. I don't even remember. I didn't want people don't to don't think remember that remember I was talking anything. directly to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because maybe I was. Yeah. But what, what is it? Well, that's fuck. the thing. If you put You don't pay that. an artist for their labor. You pay them for their vision. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. It's true. Yeah. I love that. So that's. Um, I'm gonna jump all over the place. I don't yeah, know. No if this is off limits, but can we talk a little bit about how you met Gainer? And I just, I know that you guys had like when you were doing Made Magazine. I know that you guys have physically fought a few times too. No, not physically. No, like you like left like. I I've I've yeah I mean yeah Mark Mark's amazing like so Mark's amazing my, but he's also Mark, could be like I'm sure you could be a pain in the ass too but he's got his he's got his opinion and his that's view what I'm and, saying and no but good, like because it was like at the time when he's younger though he'll like it'll resort so, to like if you feel a physical. Way, he'll feel yeah. a physical way about it. Like, oh, yeah. So like, Mark was in Calgary. He'll right? be like, do I you want to hit me right now, Mark? Like, <laughs> no, no, we're Mark, just, Mark was no, because I worked with them too. Of oh, course. I know you guys did. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, sometimes his opinion everyone turns knows in, Mark because But of sometimes me. his opinion turns into, like, is, does he want to hit I was me that I don't agree? Like, are we going to fight about this, like, physically? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I was the one degree of separation between Gaynor and all, all oh, of you guys. Oh, probably, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So Mark. He helped you with me. Was. Well, it wasn't even made. So what happened? So. I at the time had just moved and had these lofts. So I had three lofts and my office was in one of them. Just moved in Vancouver. In Vancouver, Vancouver to Vancouver. Yeah, Vancouver, Vancouver, Vancouver. Vancouver. And uh, I had met Mark. He was from Calgary. Calgary yeah. And God, uh, he had a friend. Um, and Wait, I probably know that guy. Um, H- Henry? No. no. Not no, Dylan either. No, 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 I forget his name. Oh my god. Anyways, you guys he were was bo- a partner. He, he actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, those guys. So, uh, yeah. So you guys so are Mark, both like so long-haired somethings, probably. I had a shaved head back then. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. Head he had long shaved. hair. Yeah, yeah, he had long hair. <laughs> and so, I was like, cool. He was, I think, working in a gallery or working somewhere, and uh, I had just started Made Magazine. And I started with two other people. Which was what? Made Magazine? What was it so about? Made what was the magazine, message? So this was the thing. What's Basically, the so we were in Vancouver. We weren't in New York. We weren't in L.A. We weren't in London. We weren't, you know, we were in Vancouver, Canada. In 2000. Like, you pretty might as much well have been in Siberia. Sure. Like, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Nobody like, cares at that yeah, time. No one was, everyone was wearing, like, Arc'teryx and, like, yeah. You know, like not. I don't even know back then they weren't wearing. I God, I don't even know. Not like, for fashion, they were just it was wearing backpacks it. Backpacks and Gore-Tex. Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, like, no one was. So you know, selling T-shirts at forty-five, sixty bucks. People were like, "What the hell?" Like, I can get and then for selling $12. the brands that we were selling. Yeah, you know, they were popular in Japan, New York, sure. and LA. Anyway, so um, Made Magazine was. I had. I was like, how do I get the name out there? How do I get, again, marketing yeah. and branding? And um, I mean, I offered valet parking in the store. I offered, like, I was like doing weird shit. And so. That's not that weird. I love that. Well, mm-hmm. for a streetwear. <laughs> sure, streetwear store, store in Vancouver. Like, yeah. Like you're, yeah, like what kids coming up, like, yeah, can you, you valet may, park my You bicycle? basically went to Barney's you know in LA I mean? like, and you're like, like I need this. Like, here's my yeah. skateboard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Mark came in and, and so I started made magazine because I was like, how can I get the name out there? I looked at advertising and I looked at like details. I looked at GQ. I looked at Vogue and, and Japanese magazine, and Japanese too. magazine. And it was so expensive and you know, we didn't have, we didn't have a tell. You couldn't before. advertise so, it. No. You couldn't afford. So I was like, fuck, I can create a magazine. I can create some sort of thing. I knew nothing about publishing. 
And my partner at the time is, was an art history teacher at, at Emily Carr, and him and his wife, and his wife published books. So yeah. I was like, perfect. Let's, you know. Yeah. And I got uh, Costas to do the first cover, and I made it the size that it could fit in your back pocket. So if you're taking the bus or okay. you know, on the train or whatever, and you know, Tommy Guerrero was in it. Um, yeah, your whole and community. We were just doing, yeah, were doing and, and so we had these artists, and so it was a platform. Uh, originally, it was to get our name out there, and then it was. I was like, okay, well, we can use this as a platform to give artists uh, again exposure in areas of the world that they don't necessarily have exposure in. And if we sell advertising, I want the advertisements to be art. I don't want them to be like, advertisements. Yeah. So bands, etnies, um, no. The Mocha, all these people advertised. Oh, but I was like telling. Oh, them, but they had to make the artwork. Yeah, not so they be, would make the artwork. Not like just a shoe and a price or something. Yeah, so Mark, I would I would sit with Mark, and this is how Mark gets involved. Is basically I would sit with him, and I would say, Hey, you know, I want to feature this, 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 and this, and this. Can you compile and we get the artist? You know, whether it was Dash Snow, Ryan McGinley, Aaron, uh, mm -hmm. Cause. Costas, Futura, Stat, like everyone who's right popular today is this. And then we'd have an art show or whatever, you know. And um, and so it, it was about, the idea was to do 24 issues, two issues a year. And then it would be done. And then it was done. Okay. And I was going to dead it. Stop it. No matter what. Yeah. So um, we featured all these. And I looked, at, I look at them today and I'm like, wow, like this is like a time capsule, but it's like, it's good, you know. Yeah, and so I, don't know if, I think I've seen one. Mark has a few. Yeah, and but so, so you just yeah. And so what happened was, you know, uh, there was a bit of internal fighting. Like I would go out not with, with Mark. Mark. Well, Mark. It's probably like else, not me, but okay. with with Mark. Okay. And so it was. And you're all and drinking I was traveling and partying and, at yeah, the time. I was, I was a disaster, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so you know, it was like I was driving the ship, and then I decided to like stop driving. I was just like, the ship was still going, but I was like in the back somewhere. Oh, <laughs> like, God. <laughs> and everyone's like, where the fuck are we? Yeah. Um, but uh, so uh, what happened was. Some internal was, fighting, so, you yeah, said. So, but I would bounce things off Mark. I remember like telling, like, I was like, you know, I don't want to carry Nike anymore. And Mark's like, what? Like, you know, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, it's done. I'm done. Like, it's, I'm not sneakers i'm over sneakers i don't want to wear sneakers anymore like this is not happening right and he's like what are you doing like why are you getting red? right <laughs> you know like even like i look back and i go with 24 like why didn't i sell the business yeah why not like offer to sell the business i just walked away from it i just like gave it up i was just like i don't want to do it anymore i'm over it one thing mark to ask me to ask you whether you like it or not was why are you so bad with contracts <laughs> <laughs> why is yeah i'm bad at protecting myself you are i've been told many times yeah yes why? Um, because that... i trust i i just am like look i want to create you never learn to not trust uh you know i think again it's not it, it's it, He's terrible at contracts. Too, I'm a bit of, like nutty professor, right? Like I, you know, which I think in my, as I've gotten older, look, the ego, all that stuff is like, whatever. It's not even, it I just want to make things good or great and right. see them succeed. So if I can help someone with their business and help them succeed, that's, you want nothing that's in amazing. return. Just that's like amazing. Like, paid you know, for your time. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So but, you're, you're a consultant now. Yeah, pretty much like, you know, and you know those are learning curves, right? Those right. are those are like I, you know, thirty plus years of, of but do doing this stuff. So me and Mark to go back to that was sure. so Mark was having a bit of an internal thing with someone, and I was like, I you guys just you, you need to get along, like just like this isn't you know well if, if this person's still here, then I'm out, I'm leaving, and if you know I was like can't give me a, like an ultimatum like then i gotta let you go <laughs> like, tomorrow yeah <laughs> like, oh so he was like he was, it was like kind of a mutual thing i think i mean i don't remember we were in the back office and it got heated you know it definitely got heated uh were you 250 at the time and full of muscle no, no. <laughs> he was yeah he's always been buff 
Yeah, Mark was like, but he was always. I mean, we. No, I mean, but everybody he in this was conversation like, look, look, gentle. Uh, yeah, that's not look, the conversation. That's not, yeah, nobody's yeah. violent. Eleven, no, no, no. Eleven, no, I'm uh, just saying, not everybody's great at keeping their emotions. I think things were like definitely at that time. There was the transitions, and you know, look, Mark went out on his own. He met, you know, he flourished. He, yeah, he moved to L.A. Thing. Yeah, I think Gina was, you know, his ex was yeah. acting at the time, and yeah, um, and that's what brought him to L.A. Yeah. And he met people that. Yeah. I introduced him to. You probably him introduced to, him to, yeah. Yes, and so, and then, you know, he's been able to build a great career. Yeah. I think. He's yeah, really I parlayed that. <laughs> no, I mean, I think he's built a good career. Yeah. I think he was, you know, one of, he's probably the best person that I work directly with. He's your favorite person side. that you recommended to other people? Yeah, I mean, I think he's talented. <laughs> Do you know what I'm he asking? Has a, he, has, he has a specific thing. I mean, the thing is, is that it's like, I have a specific thing too, right? So it was like, you know, if he's like, this looks great. And I'm like, like even like I just asked him who the up? other day, I thought, hey, do you know some people who can do some tech packs? Yeah, he He's does. like, yeah, here. <laughs> who fun. else flourished that you still talk to? <laughs> that I still talk to is the, that's the, that's what I'm saying. Is, the, is, I mean, is, I would talk to them. They don't talk to me. Either, <laughs> but is there another Mark, or is he just the only one? Because you and Mark are brothers, still talk, right? We I still mean, talk all the time. Yeah, all the time. I mean, I don't really talk. I, you know, uh, that I work. Uh, I mean, nobody. You know what? I I have a lot of respect for. Uh, believe it, I have a lot of respect for Craig. Craig Atkinson, okay, CYC, yeah, Craig and Chris. I, I do. I mean, even though I, I look at it, we were younger, and obviously I had uh, big ideas. Yeah, and big good ideas. Big ideas and an ego to go along with it. Um, and I was like, the concept of money really wasn't my driving. Like yep. what drove me. I it get was that. more th- again the passion of of creating, and uh, um, what they had always done and what he had always done like he is a great contractor like to this day still make some of the best product yeah um yeah yeah uh, i mean it just I seems like you're that someone that was really it's con- just yeah it's just uh again you apply vision with with great quality things i mean that yeah y- it comes out really yeah. well yeah i mean my question just i think sounds like you're just we're, we're totally fine to connect people that you liked and you knew a lot of people. <laughs> Me and Kathy still talk. So no, I know. I'm just, I, I guess I'm, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So uh, I would talk to anyone. I mean, it's not, I don't, it's like whatever. You just said it's you have no ego like, anymore. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, whatever. Ask Passes him about painting over hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars of cause. More like millions. <laughs> sure, well, tell me about Again, it. Again, inexperience. And the Arsenio Hall show. Um, start, start with painting over millions of dollars a cause. God, that seems like a bad idea. It, well, it was. It was. You know, it, it was, again, two. Were you mad or something? No. You just were no, over no, it. It was inexperienced. Tell me. It was, it was it, you know, we. I had a gallery. Yeah. Made gallery to go with the magazine. Uh-huh. Feet, so artist in the magazine. You did an Eventually exhibition. Eventually, we'd do an exhibition. Yeah. And, and, I mean, this is 2002. This is 22 years ago where, right. where causes – Flying to Vancouver, we're going. I mean, me, right. we went bowling. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? We did. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, so, um, <laughs> and I met him years before, uh, a couple years before through Alex, because he had Causes Works in the Ace Hotel in Seattle. And I went to Brooklyn and met him at his studio, and super great guy came. Um, and him and Crash did a show. So it was Cause and Crash. And cause showed up and he did these chalk drawings the balls black and he did these beautiful chalk drawings so he comes for like a week or whatever to actually make five days to actually do the art yeah and he did the chalk drawings we put up the artwork um show happened and i mean we were selling i think pieces back then were like between 1100 and 1500 dollars. oh my god yeah and um and so show ends and uh Matt, who again came from Calgary, who Matt, owns Yardbird. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Matt. Yeah. I forget that Abergale. Abergale. Yeah. Uh I'm like, Matt, come with me. Cause he was I had him in the store for a bit. And uh I'm like, come with me. We got it, we gotta repaint the gallery. <laughs> oh no. And uh oh god, it's painful. 
Um, <laughs> and so I didn't think about like, hey, you know what? I can take this drywall so off and store it. Because it, one, it was chalk. So I'm like, how do I preserve the chalk? It's an honest mistake. I mean, you didn't probably you I didn't mean, care you can about money. Code it. No, but you're not you're not driven I by wasn't money. Well, I gave away about a Banksy piece. That's ridiculous too. It showed up in my in in like it showed up. Like I would get things I sent to could, me. Like, can you like write that off as a loss? It's just a and, huge uh, loss. And I was like, what? I was like, what is this? And to me, it, it just looked like stenciled artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it didn't resonate with me. Yeah. I was like, whatever. I was like, you know what? Okay, cool. Wed. Also, pre Banksy, like before he's big too. It was a Bobby and a monkey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before, yeah. yeah. Obviously, he's sending them out. To me, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. 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 So, um, my employee liked it I said yeah here have it there you go. and um it wasn't like an original it was this print it was a, it was a whatever it was, I don't it was, know if it, hey, I think it was original oh, fuck. It was an original spray just like one just one of one it was rolled up in a container and <laughs> brutal um I mean who knows if it was real I don't know I mean yeah, it looked I mean, like it looked, at the time who, yeah, or something. I mean I don't know right yeah. I have no idea who knows so anyways so the cause show and I'm just like we need to and Matt's like, really? Like, I'm like, well, what am I, like, I can't, what am I, how do, like, I don't, you know, Eddie t then tells me, like, in the Susie, he's like, I, I took it all off the wall and I stored it. I'm like, oh, I could have done that? Like, I'm oh, because like, Eddie had something similar to I'm like, but then how does it, like, I guess I could have, like, you know, had it. And if it ever did sell, I'd be like, here, Brian, like, here's like a big chunk of money or of course. whatever, you know what I mean? But I didn't think about that. I just was like, do, 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 do. Like we rolled over everything, and uh, sure, it's just funny because not too many people could say they, you know. Now it's like millions, million it's dollars millions of, of dollars, art. millions of dollars worth of art. And I think the new museum actually had called at one photos point. Of yeah, that? I do. Not a, I see them later, or we'll add it to the thing. Yeah, I have photos of that of that exhibit <laughs> to remind me of my stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> what else are the What else are it's, photos for? It's like it's like you know, yeah, drunk calling yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it was bad. And then that Arsenio show. What's that about? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Arsenio <laughs> again stumbled. So how do you stumble into a, all this shit? I was living in Palm Springs and uh, going back and forth between Vancouver and Palm Springs. I got my cosmetology license in Palm Springs. And oh, this is early. 1989. We're all over the place right now, chronologically, yeah, but now we're going pre everything. This is 1989. Well, yeah, yeah obviously, Arsenio wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no, it could have been a later Arsenio story. This is the show. Yeah. Okay. So I opened a store in Palm Springs with a hair salon. Okay. And it was called The Edge. And um, uh, no one was really catering to young people back then so it was like i carried like big star jeans and cafe clothing in a thing, salon thing, in a clothing store oh okay so the, it was big it was the old dance center so it was a quite a large space okay um and carried uh like i had the pop shop keith herring stuff i Good. had this like i said 1989 a guy and during spring break we sold like it was like the busiest time of year right like spring break was like mtv back then Palm like, it was like yeah yeah it was after that when sunny bono shut it down um, mm. Everyone went to Lake Havasu. Everyone yeah, or Cabo. Like yeah, so, but, but before that was Palm Springs. That. Yeah. So, um, like Ocotillo Lodge, like the park. Oh. Like it was like Dude, crazy. Ocotillo like, Lodge is where my mom and dad used to take me in like 1985. Yeah. That's yeah, like exactly. where Jerry Bus would go. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy if you drive by Ocotillo Lodge now, you're like, wow, that <laughs> place, like what a shithole. <laughs> yeah. But it just, that's, yeah. it wasn't. It was vibey. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so I had the store and then, uh, a guy, a gentleman had walked in and was like, hey, you know, I, we really like what you've put together here. And I would go to New York and I'd go to like, you know, Antique Boutique and uh, Parachute and all these places, right? And, Parachute's and, and Jebbia. So, yeah. right? Well, so, he just worked there, right? Yeah, it was yeah. from Montreal. It was a Canadian yeah. company. Um, anyway, so uh, this guy was like, hey, and he showed up and he's like, can you put some stuff together? I'm going to fly you out to L.A. and um, there's a show starting. And, well, I d he didn't tell me the name of the show or anything like that. So I put a garment bag together of a bunch of different stuff. I mean, I carried like Nana shoes, like a bunch of different things. And um, I then went, met the guy. We drove to Paramount. 
and sat on the sound stage and was going to meet the band members. So Michael Wolf, John B. Williams, Star Parody. Wow. Yeah, all those guys. So, um, and we ended up getting kicked out of the <laughs> off the stage. Why? I don't know what happened. I, I just know that we had to leave. <laughs> what? And uh, they were like, "Can you meet us at the Freeze Building on Hollywood Boulevard?" Yeah. So I was like, "Okay." So met them at the Freeze Building, showed them all this stuff, and then they had called me back and said, "Hey, can you put stuff together for these guys?" Like, you know, once a week or whatever. And I really only did it for uh, like. John B. Williams was the main person that I did. I, I would hook the other guys up with some Got stuff it. and things like that. So you were just styling the guys on the show? Yeah. And that was it. And then Still kind of cool. And then though. it, and yeah, then it yeah, spawned right. into other things. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of uh, the kickstart. Yeah. And then I, yeah. I, uh, less about your career. I just, going back, it, I just wanted to say on the Alcatel Lodge thing, it's so funny to think about what, what was good enough for rich people in the 80s versus what is good now. Oh, I know. Like, if you just think about, like, the room at yeah. the Ocotillo Lodge, <laughs> it's so basic. And the ca- and the yeah. fir- and the the comfort, not the comfort of the whatever, the mattress is not fucking hard and nothing special. And, no. you know, that and the coolest and richest people in L.A. would go there. But today, it's like they wouldn't be caught dead unless it's a yeah. five-star, four yeah. seasons. I mean, and people would go, just, when you'd go there, you'd sit, again, that was the thing. you go to Palm Springs, you sit by the pool, you go play golf, or you would go have these great dinners. Sure. Yeah, and you, you and go that, golf at a public course. Like yeah, that it, was it. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever. Well, all the public courses were in great shape too. They they kind of still are, but now yeah. it's like it's so elite, like yeah, yeah. elitism or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you would not do that if you're going to the desert and you're playing public. It's like, I mean, I I'm there's not, still I'm, a generation of I think older people that will do that. Like I'm just talking about like still, the young rich. Yeah, like, they're not, not ever going to no. be on a public. They're never going to stay in a medium no. hotel. No, it's just so weird. Well, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do, yeah, do you? absolutely, yeah. I played public golf in Palm Springs two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, I'm not that connected. I like, I really fuck, I really like like dirty bars and poor yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not poor people, but just like I think they're more. I find them interesting. I don't know. Not them as if they're not like everybody's the fucking same. Yeah. But I just get a little, ex- I get a little exhausted in the in the luxury space all the time. But what's so lucky? It's not even that. That's and they're the, all the same. Yeah. It all reminds me of the same day. I just keep having the same day. Because it's 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 a constant. Uh, we we are looking at the same things over and over. Where it used to be the idea of discovery. Sure. Where you would go and discover things, right. And you'd go to places, and you were only able to see those places. If you went. Right. And then you'd get something from there. You'd bring something home, whether it was a candle, a t shirt, a towel. A now you can just buy it on their website exactly. or, or, or just like see it online. Like I woke up this morning and I'm like, Erewhon and Sushi Club, do you want to pre order? <laughs> you right. know? And I'm like, it's a grocery store. Like, yeah, no, I don't want to yeah, pre order. Yeah, yeah. Just sushi, go there and get what you know? I need. Yeah, like yeah. it's limited edition. Yeah. It's just, it's again, it's marketing. Right, fine. It works in this day and age, but right. I think at some point there's going to be a little bit of a. Uh, I think, yeah, it's finding those things. Like I, yeah. I like, even, you know, I, I, I do find the merch side of things more interesting than the brands. Hmm. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Um, by the way, just to finish, I mean, like, some of it. It's not bitter, but like, for one, I can't. I would. I can't. I can't afford to do luxury all the time too. So I kind of am yeah. forced to like, <laughs> I'm forced to like, like public and like a, a cheaper drink. But, but I don't think that if I could, like if I, if, if it's I the could, same effect though, right? Yeah. It's the same. They do the same thing. Um, I play bad wherever I am. So it's like, exactly. You know I mean? like, it yeah, doesn't exactly. matter what course I'm and I, and Of course I love to be pampered and I love more space and yeah. I love to not be looked at or watched because there's just nobody around or whatever it may yeah. be. Um, I just don't think I'd ever be too good for the regular thing. And I don't know that the people that only do that think that, but like, I think you're pretty much, I mean, I've known you like how many years, like like, I've known you 20 years now. Yeah. So it's like, um, I think, uh, you're pretty much the same, you know, as, yeah, I'm pretty much the same as I've always been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not affected. No, no, no. There's nothing to be affected by. Unfortunately, I wish I would love to know who I am with millions and millions of dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be. I think I'd, I'd be, be the same. I'd be, I'd be a ghost. I'd be like, I, I want to disappear. That's. I'd be like, I'd be in a studio. Like I was seriously, I'd be painting. I'd be just making things. I'd be like, every day is arts and crafts. Yeah, I and no pressure to have to. I don't know that mine's as beautiful, but I can try to make it beautiful. Like I would be raising my kids more. Yeah, I'd be more focused. Absolutely, I'd be like, more focused on them. I already go out of my way to like get to their games and things, but I would really be like. It would be everything, yeah. and then of course golf because that's like a and happy they wouldn't place. Want to be, more time for my wife, like that, honestly. More time for do. my my wife, probably more dinners. Like I, I just, you know, I'm not I'm not a creative like you were in the sense of like I don't paint or you know I don't really write or anything. Everyone but maybe does. I write. Everyone I, does. Everyone does. Every, it's, it's just yeah. It's it's again. It's, it's, yeah, but I I guess my happy place wouldn't be like a um, like knitting <laughs> or anything. You know, not yeah. knitting. Uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't even know sewing or anything like <laughs> making clothes. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be my happy place, but. Um, but it would certainly be, I, you wouldn't see me much. Yeah. You already kind of don't see me. I already moved like far as hell. Yeah. Um, I, forgot, no, I think I've seen you more in the past. Uh, I've seen you twice in the last week. Yeah, well, maybe we're going to do some stuff years. together too. I kept yeah. thinking about that. That would be exciting. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought about it afterwards. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We'll wrap about it off, off, uh, yeah. off camera, <laughs> offline. <laughs> offline. Um, is there anything else? We never, I, I Mark never put anything down. I there. never talk. Well, I could go back to chat GPT. I did ask it uh, if I'm interviewing Rafe Edelberg, what should I ask him? His creative process, sources of inspiration. I just hate all that stuff. Oh, <laughs> the evolution of streetwear. No, his approach to sustainability and fashion. The evolution of streetwear yeah. is roadkill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> his approach to sustainability and fashion. I mean, sure, sustainability is great, but like, I don't really want to. Yeah, talk people about have it. stuff that I made 20 years ago. Still. Yeah, there you Look go. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still have that. Yeah, it's exactly. Sustainable. Super sustainable. I, didn't I think need, that's the biggest I didn't thing. Need, is that me it's too. Like, I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I have s glasses still. No, I, I totally I agree. Like, everybody, you know, newer brands are like, do you guys do anything for sustainability? Do you have biodegradable acetate? And it's like, yeah, I can answer that question. We have all of that, but like, your jacket. I don't need two cashmere jackets. Yeah. I have one. Yeah. And I've had it for twenty years. Yeah. But it doesn't perpetuate this fucking need for fucking product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't fit the well, narrative of everything that we do. Exactly. And which we're is so we're creatures fucking of habit stupid. too, though. If you look in someone's closet, they buy the same thing over and over. And I over stopped again, doing that. You know, but, and, but, but yeah. that's the thing. If it's like, oh, you have, you know, twenty jean jackets. Right. Like. And what you don't the even fuck? wear one. No, it's and so stupid. It's just like, but we keep buying the same thing. I, I, it's like a, I, I'm a big, like just regular t-shirt guy, right? Like, and like, I wanted to find one. It's just not always the most expensive. Like James, I love James Rose. It doesn't fucking last and it's very expensive. Yeah. I also tried Kirkland. They don't, they suck too. They're a little <laughs> too low. I, I'm going to bring up this brand way too much. I just randomly found that Abercrombie makes a really good basic shirt you and it's fucking lasted me for three years. I don't know what to say. I don't know why George it's them. Is in Walmart. See, I don't know they that. Make, they I, make good t-shirts. But you just everyone's that, always like, "Yeah, it looks like your yeah. t-shirt." Like, yeah, I tried I Kirkland. Like they just only they have they're great when they pull them out, yeah. but they just happen to only last like two months. You wash them like seven yeah. times and they're done. I don't know what it is about this Abercrombie. I'll try George's. Like sometimes the most expensive brand doesn't do it. Sometimes they do. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know where or why. But yeah. anyways, uh, I don't know. Collaborating with other artists and brands we yeah, talked yeah, about. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is stupid. Is it no? I want to know about the dungeon. <laughs> I don't know anything about dungeons. Um, yeah, I guess we should wrap it up here soon. I got, another, I got, I got another person. Anything else you want to ask me? We never talk. Oh, I was gonna say I'd never talk about glasses on this show ever. Really? No, I don't know why. Why? I don't know. What would you say what if, you I was, if I asked you about glasses? What would you say? Uh, I have. I need them. Yeah, you don't Constant have any leg. Garrett lights, nor have you ever I had do. any. Oh yeah. no, yeah, of course I do. From yeah. the shoot, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, prescription lenses, right? So yeah, it's like you have prescription um, of these. But I, I've, I, I called you. I said I want to make a pair of glasses yeah, yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I've yet, you know. we've yet to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, what <laughs> are we making? Is it Ray Fadelberg yes, to his Garrett yes, lights? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I think it was originally, I, like, I have a design that I that I. Well, we'll, we'll talk all about all this offline. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll make something come to life. All right. A monocle too. I think I only got one good eye at this point. So. Oh, a monocle. Yeah. Do you know uh, what's his name? Like My dad did that at Oliver Peoples. He yeah. made a monocle. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, Romanelli. Oh, did he? Yeah. Darren. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. They made one. I think. For what, Mr. Peanut? No, I think just Doctor Romanelli. Monopoly. No, what's that? Well, the, the game. Monopoly. The game Monopoly. Yeah, no, the guy, was, didn't the guy wear monocle too? The Monopoly. Yeah, but I, I think you know Romanelli. I mean, it was just like a, a artifact. Darren's full of great. Like he's got a good. Idea. It was I just mean, an. I, air, I yeah. haven't heard from that guy in forever. I know he goes to Dodger I just games. Just messaged him. Like, yeah. Uh, well, it's not that I would hear from we him. We were never close, but I mean, I haven't I'm like, heard. Let's go get coffee. The guy drinks a lot of coffee. I don't know if he still does. But. Yeah, he goes to Dodger games. Um, yeah. All right, that's it. Thanks, Rafe. All right, man. All right, peace. Thank you.